Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Grapevine. I'm Reham. I'm Mary. And today we have a very special guest, Dr. Hani Ashamallah. He has been with us many times in the past, and we love to have you. So thank you so much for thank being you. here again. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Um, today's topic is a difficult topic. It's um, a thorny topic, and we discussed it among our team here at The Grapevine, and we felt that it was necessary to bring it up, um, that a lot of people will be helped by bringing this topic and openly talk about it on CYC. Um, today we are talking about masturbation. I'm going to dive into the questions. So Dr. Haney, um, let's start by t defining masturbation. What is masturbation? First, let me just again echo that you ought to be congratulated as a program to bring a topic like that. Um, definitely, some people may feel uncomfortable hearing us, mm -hmm. and we want to tell them from now that even if you think your son or maybe daughter are not engaged in this, you may not be 100% sure that they are not. So. Thank you for bringing the topic, and I believe we are going to help more people than hopefully, hopefully, God forbid to offend anyone. Now, masturbation is a self-centered sexual stimulation to reach arousal. And basically, people, men or women, can use visual stimuli to help them reach that arousal point. So that's basically what the mere definition of masturbation. Now, it has been more common lately to um, call things different than what they really are. So masturbation has been renamed with a lot of different things such as self-love or self-stimulation. Mm. Um, what do you think about that? And, and I think this is done in the effort to, um, I guess, dilute it a little bit or make it more friendly or more acceptable as a behavior. Yeah. So, I mean, science have tried to give it more names. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's a very selfish attitude towards a sexual organ of a boy or a girl to reach sexual arousal um, and it's a very selfish way and it's basically using a sexual organ that's not designed to be become so selfish like that to be used in a different way than God intended. Now I am sure you are aware of um, how the Society of Psychiatry and Psychology look at masturbation right they define it as a normal behavior right um, and we know from research that it starts very early on in in life and this may be shocking to some of our uh, audience that it starts in infancy mm -hmm. uh, at, at some in some people so comment on that please so i i, I want to differentiate a little bit between sexual organs exploration amongst infants, toddlers, maybe until the age of seven, eight, where a young girl keeps touching her genitalia or a boy who keeps rubbing on his genitalia. It's moms become so angry and they hit and they prevent. And I think the best is to make them sort of involved, distracted in something else, it's going to pass. This is not what we are talking about. They didn't reach yet a sexual stimulation level. Mm -hmm. Their hormones are not ready for them to reach any type of erection or vaginal wetness or anything like that. So we cannot equate this with what happened with adolescents, adults, even beyond mm -hmm. because as you are aware as a psychologist yourself masturbation is um, a habit 
that can occur in any age and the magnitude is enormous mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it affects boys and girls maybe boys more but there is 40 percent of girls uh, in the age of between 14 and 15 and one British survey had masturbated at least once so the magnitude is higher we should differentiate it between it and what I call it sexual exploration for little uh, toddlers. So you did mention that basically the way I understood it is the main reason we consider masturbation is sinful behavior is the fact that you're using an organ for a purpose other than what was intended for it. Yeah, so we really want to get some facts clear. Okay. Um, Saint Augustine said, we should not be ashamed of organs that God was not ashamed when he created them. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing shameful about the sex organ in a girl or a boy. Now, God is the designer of sex. Let's call him exactly this who can, is. This right here is, can be a shock to okay. many people. It's not a shock because said. he is the... He is the one who invented this beautiful body. Right. And whoever studied the anatomy of sex organs, it's amazing how God created an amazing organ. But like you said before, moms, you know, panic right. and freak out and don't touch that. And yeah. it's dirty, it's shame, you know, right, all of right, these things. Right. So oftentimes, especially in uh, our culture, we grow up. Yes. Thinking that this is a shameful part of our body. And, uh, and some, some people even within marriage consider that, oh, if I have pleasure when I'm having sex with my husband or wife, that must, be, um, that must mean I'm a bad person. Yeah. So unfortunately, sexuality in general is a bit messed up, unfortunately, because of what the media portrays for us. But to come back to parents who are parenting young boys and girls and speaking to youth who are boys and girls in their adolescent and early adult life, we need them to be aware there is nothing shameful about their sex organs. There is an intention that God, when He created those sex organs, for them to be used in the way He intended as a designer for sex. Right. When He designed the brain. He designed it f to be creative, to be thinkful, to be productive, to be contributing. Mm -hmm. He did not design the brain, for example, to move this cross from one place to another. That's the design of the hand. Right. He designed the sex organs for two main reasons. Both of them happen to be under the wings of marriage. Yes. And if I were to use them these sex organs were intended to be used for holy pleasure in the marriage. ages of marriage right. or procreation and then take it outside and use it for a self-stimulation, then I'm using it in the wrongful way that God did not intend to use. And that's where science and religion may differ. Mm -hmm. I am quite aware of what you said, that psychologists are saying this is even maybe healthy to some. Yes, we're going to Removal of that. anxiety. Yes. But mm -hmm. we need to be aware that the intent of God is a little, is not a little, but is different. Significantly different. Yes. 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 So maybe this is a good time to talk more about sex from a Christian perspective. And I know we've talked, discussed this before the, the, we started the recording. Um, God created sex before sin. Yes. And so, because in some people's minds, they, they might think that sex was one of the results of sin. So, yeah, it's very important to realize that God does not create anything sinful. Let's be very specific and very clear. This is the baseline we work upon. God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and He asked them to be in love, nakedness, clear to each other, honest, pure, nothing to hide. 
Right. They had their sex organs then. Right. There is nothing shameful about their sex organs. When they fell, they start to hide things because they felt like, now I need to hide myself. And that's where we see all the pictures. They are putting an aprons on and they are covering. Exactly, bring it, at, I know your, your daughter is four years old, but imagine she's two years old, three years old, and she want, you want to change her diaper in the church. She will never tell you, Mommy, that's shameful. Mm -hmm. She doesn't right. know anything. She would right. even she go around naked around. around. <laughs> exactly. Right. The, this is how Adam and Eve, when they were created, they were simple, child mindful, nothing shameful. What happened to us when we sinned and the sin entered into our nature, mm -hmm. we corrupted the beautiful image upon which we were created. Mm. And the sexuality was the first thing to be corrupted because that's the easier way for the evil one to go inside our nature and make it into that this is evil. And that's why the sexual sins are multiplying by the day. There are right. kinds of sins, of sexual sins. They were in the past, but they are transgender, uh, 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 transsexual, um, all kinds of sexual sins are happening yes. only because the first image was beautiful. Mm. But when sin entered, sexuality became corrupted. But God's intentions need to be still respected and needs to be still uh, revisited. That we know, we need to know that sexuality in marriage is holy. Mm -hmm. Sexuality in the intent of God, definitely holy. This is an altar of God. He created your body and my body. He created the man's body and the woman's body. And he has no intention except the happiness of both. He right. does not create it to say, okay, I'm giving you hormones and sex organs from the age of 12 until you are 28, I'm testing you. I'm giving you this to <laughs> torture you. See, you're playing with you, but I'll still keep you without sex. Does that, God does not do that. God is giving you this to train yourself into self-control in all kinds of things, self-control in food, but self-control in sexuality, because that's more important than food. Because food is a limited thing, it doesn't hurt your body. But sexuality, when it can hurt you, because it's part of your identity. So, um, y you did touch on that, but I think it's, um, it's important for us to discuss it further and make the audience aware of it that I am sure they will hear it from other sources. Yes. Um, now the research is showing that um, masturbation is healthy for you. Uh, it has a lot of health benefits in back in the days. Um, there, there, wa there were myths about uh, masturbation. People used to uh, claim that it will cause uh, problems. It will cause you, for example, to grow hair in your palms and uh, oh, that's go. New. Yes, <laughs> I yes, I have before. heard of that. Okay. Um, um, go blind, uh, become impotent, um, and so on. Now it's the opposite that's mm. happening. Now they are kind of promoting it as a health benefit because yeah. it relieves the stress. It treats headaches. Uh, it treats ministerial cramps and so on and so forth. So we want our youth and our audience to be aware that they will hear this from yes. the secular world. They will promote masturbation to you just like they promote everything else, pornography or homosexuality and so on. So thank you for bringing this up. And it is true that there are several reports claiming it's an anxiety relief, mm -hmm. it's a, a removal of stress, it's a decongestant Sleep of some aid pelvic too, vessels. Yeah. Um, however, though, I want to say maybe two things. One, masturbation can be addictive, meaning a boy can masturbate once a week, then three times a week, then three times a day, then he is like crazy, 
-hmm. you can't stop. How can be something addictive could be healthy? I mean, you outside the recording, you're saying even food, if it becomes something uh, lustful to the extent you can't stop, is crazy and craving could be dangerous. So, number one, if it is addictive, then it's definitely wrong. So you can claim what if it's not addictive or I'm going to control myself. Mm -hmm. Let me ask two questions. One, there are counteracting to the same reports you mentioned. There are some reports are saying people are less able to perform sexually after marriage when they are moving into masturbation too much because they are desensitized, they are not responding to normal natural stimulus easier mm -hmm. because they used to need much vigorous type of stimulation. So their wives will take work to get them to enjoy a natural, simple, holy type of intimacy. Mm -hmm. The third point is the act of shame. And maybe I'm naive, but I yet to meet a boy or a girl who are actively involved in this act and they don't feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. If they are ashamed and God is the one who created them, this is his alarm clock. It's the Holy Spirit working in Exactly. Them. This is the alert that the godliness within them telling them that this is not right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if I read something that's clean, I don't get ashamed of it. But if I read something very sexual, right away I feel guilty. It's the same happens in masturbation, but maybe tenfold. This girl feels ashamed, feels guilty. This boy feels down, feels gloomy, feels ashamed. He doesn't want to be with people because he feels defeated. Why these feelings? If this is a very normal, healthy relation, I mean type of uh, habit and it's being conducted and being tested and everybody is blessing it that this is the normal route. Mm -hmm. So why kids are feeling guilty? Mm -hmm. Something is telling them this is not normal. You are using this organ in a way that not intended to be. Mm -hmm. And to me, as a naive pe person, I think this is God's click to that person. This is not the way, Habibi, I want you to use it. Mm -hmm. I want you to use it in the way I intended for it to use it. This is a selfish way to please yourself. What happens after marriage when men who are so addictive to masturbation and they want to continue this act after, men or women. Mm -hmm. The sexuality in marriage is a giving, is a sacrifice. I'm giving my wife to that, uh, my, my body to that person and she's giving her body to me. That's the self way of sex. Mm -hmm. But right away, a person within marriage he or she wants to please herself alone and she is very skimpy or doesn't want to go into the marital bed because that's easier that's yes. less work mm -hmm. yes. that i can take care of myself right away mm -hmm. yeah maybe but what about the other person that you are united with that's your buddy you are united you can you are clinged mm. you are cleaved you are joined who is, who, is, who is selfish here? You. Mm -hmm. And so the psychologists are easier to explain things because it makes sense to them without thinking about the sequelae that's happening with every kid who comes down, feels guilty, feels scarred, or the woman who is in her marriage field that there's something wrong in our marriage. My husband is not the same, he's not available, mm. or becoming less potent because he is not easy to be stimulated. Mm. I hope I'm not too figurative for anybody. Uh, let's hope we are not. <laughs> yes. So, 
that will bring up another point uh, masturbation within married couples mutual masturbation or individual masturbation during the act of having normal sex listen <clears throat> I mean this is we're getting again to one of the gray areas um, it's my opinion that sexuality in marriage needs to be holy mm -hmm. and needs to be united to unite both of them once you bring pornography in marriage, starvation in marriage, um, any perversions of sexuality in marriage, then right away you remove the purity of sex. Look mm. at the two words. Some people mm -hmm. say, what? Mm -hmm. They are not to be placed in the same tense sentence, but they are. Mm -hmm. You are removing the purity of sex in marriage and replacing it with something so mediocre, so worldly, so lustful, and right away we lose the intent of God. God gives sexuality in marriage to unite two people, to relieve their stress, to give them a gift mm. for both of them. And all of a sudden we come up with those manipu manipulations and procedures in order for us to invent something. God invented it in a way. Mm -hmm. You don't have to reinvent something that was well done. Right. So again, I, I want to just bring up another point here. Um, I am a child psychiatrist and the behavior, the sexual behavior of masturbation um, comes up a lot with my patients. And um, again, like I said before, I was taught to tell parents not to panic and that this is a normal uh, milestone, normal part of development. So based on what we just discussed, it, it is, it becomes a difficult, little bit difficult for me, like what stand to take. Mm. But again, here we are discussing it more from a Christian perspective yeah. than, than a secular one. So unfortunately, when you are under the boundaries of work laws, especially in psychiatry and psychology. I am told by my colleagues that you are not allowed to tell a homosexual person that you can be helped if you wish to be helped. You cannot tell a mom who's bringing her kid that masturbation is not something helpful. But if we focus on our Christian views we can't forget that St. Paul mentioned it very clearly. God has not called us for impurity, mm -hmm. but for holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives him the Holy Spirit. He also says, let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled. Mm -hmm. And that's back to your last uh, issue regarding the perversions in marriage, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to separate here what psychology today is saying and what the Bible yesterday, today, and tomorrow keeps saying. Right. In my little life as a physician, I have seen medicine and psychiatry change many times. I have not to see the Bible change once. Right, that's a very I good have, point. I have mm -hmm. known diseases that now they are not diseases, yes. like homosexuality. I have heard certain medications are not to be used and we literally we're using it a lot. So science is a dynamic thing. It could change in five years to something completely different. Show me anything in the Bible including the shame and the guilt, including that repentance can make this kid feels very joyful, very happy, very hopeful, very successful. Yeah. yeah, I can make him sit with a psychologist to tell him, go and do it 10 times a day, you'll be fine. <laughs> but he will be more guilty and more shameful and more down every single day. Right. And probably he will lose grades in school and he will be un unsuccessful. But make him sit with the father of confession. Make him repent and tell him, darling, you fine, you'll be okay. This is just a habit you can get rid of. Mm -hmm. 
and we help him to get rid of it and look at how the kid becomes more more laughing, more joyful, more enjoying life, more enjoying his, his body, right. growing his muscles, growing, not just to sitting all the day watching something. Because remember, pornography is an accomplice to masturbation. Right. Both are joined today. Mm -hmm. And if, per, if those psychologists, they can come to me with all their data, come and tell me, now masturbation, how do you separate it from pornography? They are inseparable. And all of a sudden, yeah. we go through all the sequelae of uh, pornography and masturbation together. No, I was going to say that kind of leads us into um, what are what are ways to fix this addiction yeah. or this problem. And I think this is very important to our audience. And um, again, I, I want to applaud you for bringing a topic that usually, as you started by saying thorny and taboo, the first thing I tell my kids, please believe that your body is an altar of Christ. Um, you don't, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So number one, I always tell my girls and boys, can you imagine you go to the altar tomorrow and you find it, somebody playing basketball inside it? <laughs> You'll be shocked. Yes. If you find some pictures in the altar that don't pertain to anything holy, mm -hmm. you will be shocked. Can you go to the altar and you find it, no tablecloth, no nothing, curtains, nothing? Yeah. It's shocking. This is the altar. Mm -hmm. God created us to be holy, created the sex organs to be holy. And do, number one, I tell my boys and girls, realize, number one, the holiness of your body. Number two, do not anymore accept justification from your mind, saying everybody does it, that's a common thing, psychologists saying that, yeah, fine. But tell me the last time you were happy after you did it. Number three, find your trigger points when and where you are vulnerable. You come from school alone. You stay two hours without anyone, and you know that you are going to fall. Mm -hmm. You know when you watch things, you're going to do the bad ha this habit. You know your vulnerable points. You want to know that there is a certain friend always gives you ideas for this. Mm -hmm. Sever your relation. Your remove your and of course if it's linked to pornography and I hope uh, we record in the future also something about pornography uh, put something in the devices you have to avoid bringing these topics this media I mean um, number four or five find someone you can be accountable to mm -hmm an older, uh, a big brother, a mm -hmm. bigger sister. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, a, I mean, a father or a mother. It could be, of course. But this person could help you to grow. Uh, I mean, you could be an older sister to a young girl in high school and you tell her how good is her body, how great that she will feel if she avoid this and how good, amazing life she has ahead of her. and how pleasing to God she will be and and repentance will just bring her back to as if she had never sinned and and we need to be always hopeful to our kids but we need also to be accountable they need to be accountable to us so he calls me said uncle I, I am sorry I fell again no problem let's redo it again we start again no harm is done um, you I, say, I was yeah. going to ask to kind of going along with that how as a parent, um, do you handle if you you know find out that your son or daughter yeah. is masturbating, you catch them or whatever? Right. How how should what is the right way to so handle that? So the right way, number one, don't panic, don't call the police and the fire <laughs> fighters and and everybody in the whole country for them. Don't don't expose them. 
come on. Be sensitive. It's a sin like any sin. He is growing and every, every age has its own unfortunate sins. Be friend to them. If I am the dad to that kid and you are the mom, you will tell me, by the way, our son has this issue. And I would go out with him and I will tell him, listen, when I was in your age, these things could have happened to me. Thankfully, and with the help of people that helped me, I want to help you. Let me help you. Why do you fall on this? Mm -hmm. And he will tell me when I'm alone, people are showing me this. People send me text messages with some sexting or media or porn or whatever. And I will be his accountable party. I will try to help him to avoid being vulnerable, mm. to strengthen his trigger points. And I will definitely take him to a father of confession, make him be his friend. I will make him repent and I'll show him how to repent. I'll help him to confess. And I'll every week I'll check with him, not as a, as a paranoid dad, but I'll say, Habibi, how things are. Um, and I'll, I'll pay for him for a full year in gym. And I want him to be in gym and I'll go Distracted. with him to the gym and I, I will go with him swimming if I must. And I, I will take him to trips with his friends and, and I'll invite his, I will do a whole program around him. Mm. Because the more you involve him, the more you make him look how beautiful this body is mm. and how much hurt you are going to hurt this beautiful design if you use it wrongfully. Um, I think also we need to remember that God is so forgiving and remind them, our beautiful boys and girls, that there is no sin that's too big for the cross. Mm. I, I always tell my boys and girls, prostrate yourself with the sign of the cross, even if you are about to do that habit, even if you just finish the habit. People will tell me, no, uncle, no way. How can I cross myself and I just did this? I tell them, if I am sick, I will take the antibiotic even my hands are unclean because the antibiotic is going to help me. And the cross is going to help you, even if your hands are unclean, even if your body has sin. And I believe in the grace of God and the mercy of God so much. And those boys and girls, when they taste how God is kind on them. And he is not sitting really with a big camera taking snapshots on them when they make a sin, but rather he wants, they, he, he wants to cover them. He wants to support them, lift them up. This, they will feel good. Um, and then I will talk to them about shame. And I'll tell them, I want you to have it not to be ashamed anymore. Whatever happened is forgotten. I'll tell them, God forgets it the same time you repent it. Mm -hmm. And with the grace of God, if I can remove the shame and the guilt, it's very easy to correct this habit. The problem is the guilt brings shame, and the shame brings the habit, and the habit brings guilt, and the guilt shame, and go into a vicious circle. Yeah. I mean, we must have our kids to have a relationship with God because this is the age, unless they really become close to God, um, there are very little they can do on their own. Uh, yes, we can do some mechanics and some valuable things, but uh, really to see God. And hopefully after an episode like this, and that would probably be one of the purposes of bringing this up. Yes. Parents will be more proactive. Thank uh, you. That they will bring up this topic or sexuality in general with their kids before they even know, like you said, before they find out that my son is doing this or my daughter is uh, falling into this sin. I'm really hoping that in every church there are a couple of servants who are quite familiar with sexual sins, sex education. They start going to classes, befriending kids, ready to listen without panic. Mm -hmm. They must be those types of servants, specialized in purity 
issues. Mm. And believe me, we need them every day more than our other. Right. And this is a very, this is very good. Yeah. So. I also think, and I know we had you, Dr. Henny, um, discuss um, several months ago about uh, talking to our kids about sex. Yes. And I think this kind of goes hand in hand. If, if a parent has never spoken to their child about sex and the very first encounter is going to be mm. about masturbation, that, that may That's be very be difficult. very difficult, yeah. yes. But if you start as a parent, you start early right. and you have that, create that open relationship uh, with your child where they feel comfortable to approach you about the topic of sex, then it may be easier when they reach that age where masturbation may become an issue. Absolutely. Yes, very very well said. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Good point. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I um, don't have any more questions. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> Okay, so um, I mean, th this was a great discussion. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here Thank and you. Uh, educating us about this topic. Thank you. And uh, I'm really grateful for CYC um, as a media, uh, as a medium to bring up all these topics and be able to openly and freely talk about them for one purpose is to benefit each other um, and improve ourselves and improve our relationship with God every day. So thank you for listening and uh, stay tuned for the next episode of The Grapevine.